Fort Nelson is in northeastern British Columbia, the largest community in the Northern Rockies Regional Municipality, which makes up 10% of the province's total land mass. Fort Nelson held town status prior to 2009 when it amalgamated with the former Northern Rockies Regional District to form the Northern Rockies Regional Municipality. Fort Nelson became the administrative center. Fort Nelson, named in honor of the British naval hero Horatio Nelson, was established by the Northwest Trading Company in 1805 as a fur trading post. The post did not survive beyond 1813. The Hudson's Bay Company re-established a trading fort here in 1865, which has continued since that time. Due to fire, flood, and feud, Fort Nelson is in its fifth location. Fort Nelson winters, except when dry Chinook winds blow in from the Pacific, tend to be severely cold and generally dry. The average monthly snow depth is only 18 centimeters or 7 inches. Summers are warm and occasionally rainy. Hot spells are rare. Fort Nelson is colder than anywhere else in British Columbia from November through February, but the mean average temperature during the summer is warmer than coastal areas, even as far south as Victoria and comparable to Vancouver. A major economic pillar suffered in 2008. Two forestry mills closed mainly due to two events in the United States, a collapse in housing prices and the subprime mortgage crisis. With the oil price decline in 2014, most gas fields and rigs shut down. With completion of BC Hydro's natural gas power plant providing electricity, Fort Nelson again experienced true growth. A railway was built by the Pacific Great Eastern Railway, also known as BC Rail, to Fort Nelson in 1971. This allowed efficient transportation of local industry's major products, lumber and gas, to larger markets in the south. The railway was abandoned due to lack of use in the 20-teens and subsequently shut down. Although very seasonal, tourism is an important economic sector in Fort Nelson's economy. About 300,000 tourists, most of whom are retired RV travelers heading to or from Alaska, visit Fort Nelson every year. Tourists are attracted by local wildlife, such as moose, black bears, grizzly bears, caribou, white tail and mule deer, elk, bison, stone sheep, mountain goats, and wolves. The Liard Hot Springs are home to several bird species such as the golden eagle, the bald eagle, and the great horned owl. Before the building of the Alaska Highway, there were only two routes to Fort Nelson from Fort St. John. One started out heading east along the Peace River, north on the Slave River to Fort Resolution in the Northwest Territories on Great Slave Lake, then west onto the Mackenzie River to Fort Simpson, and south on the Liard River and Fort Nelson River to Fort Nelson. This journey was over 1,200 miles, taking more than a month. A horse pack trail from Fort St. John to Fort Nelson was first blazed in 1919 and 20. 
175 miles to Sakani Landing, and 150 miles from there to Fort Nelson. Three weeks on a rough and difficult trail. This trail would later form the basis for the Alaska Highway. During the mid-1930s, Fort Nelson began to be served by float aircraft in the summer and ski planes in winter. In 1937, Fort Nelson saw its first scheduled air service with the arrival of Grant McConaughey's United Air Transport. McConaughey had obtained a mail contract between Edmonton and Whitehorse. After the inspection flight, a mail contract was awarded to United Air Transport for 10 trips a year to Fort Nelson, one a month except for freeze up and break up. In July 1937, McConaughey used a Ford tri-motor on floats to fly north, landing on the river at Fort Nelson. A month later, he would erect a log building to house radio equipment for communication with his aircraft. In 1935, the Civil Aviation Branch of the Department of National Defense had begun a survey of possible sites for an air route from Edmonton to Whitehorse with airfields to be established en route. In mid-September 1938, John A. Wilson, Controller of Civil Aviation of the Federal Department of Transport, arrived at Fort Nelson in a Waco cabin biplane on floats, flown by McConaughey. Wilson was accompanied by the Superintendent of Post Office Departments for the Federal Government. The group stopped at Fort Nelson again the following May. During the winter of 1938-39, McConaughey's airline, now known as Yukon Southern Air Transport, began to develop airfields with radio communication at Fort St. John, Fort Nelson, and Watson Lake, anticipating an all-weather service from Edmonton to Whitehorse. McConaughey had been convinced that in the future the airline would need to go on wheels or go bust. He further convinced Clancy Craig of Edmonton to take on a contract to build a Fort Nelson airfield for the sum of $150 a month plus expenses. Craig hired several local indigenous people to assist in the project working with untrained pack horses to scrape dirt and pull stumps. Yukon Southern Air Transport constructed a log building to house its radio equipment, its operator, and its agent, as well as a bunkhouse for itinerant air crew and passengers. The Department of Transport established a weather office and air ground communication station at the site, early in 1940. Department of Transport engineers were flown in. Construction began with the arrival of the contractor who brought personnel and equipment by the waterways route. The Peace, Slave, Mackenzie, Liard, and Fort Nelson Rivers. Fledgling Department of Transport radio operator Bill Wiley arrived at Fort Nelson late in 1942 to join two operators who had been there about two years. The first aircraft to use the airfield on Yukon Southern Air Transport Service was a Barclay Grove flown by Ted Field. The Barclay Grove arrived in April of 1939 on its way to Whitehorse from Edmonton. Fort Nelson Airfield was a valuable asset for Allied military forces in the Second World War. It served as an air base for the United States Air Force and the Royal Canadian Air Force. With the arrival of the first CAT train along the route of the Alaska Highway at the airfield site 
on March 31, 1941, 48 days after leaving Dawson Creek, the construction of the airfield started in earnest. The first official landing occurred September 3, 1941, when a Department of Transport Beechcraft D-17S arrived on an inspection trip with J.A. Wilson, Director of Air Services for the Department of Transport. Alaska Highway construction began in 1942 out of a firm belief that Alaska faced a significant threat of Japanese invasion. Initial highway construction was performed by more than 11,000 United States soldiers. After about nine months, the highway was complete. Fort Nelson was a bustling service center. By 1943, the United States Army had assumed full responsibility for completion of runways and buildings at Fort Nelson, then known militarily as Staging Unit No. 3. At this point, Fort Nelson's airfield had a single gravel runway, 4,600 feet long, and two log buildings, one occupied by the Department of Transport and the other under construction for the RCAF. 